just so everyone knows, we will be recording today's call. This will be shared publicly. Um, so if anyone watching this on the YouTube would like to be added directly to this call, you can get in touch with me using the forum on takingcline.com. Because this is a public call, feel free to make any content during today's presentation and discussion, um, Twitter posts, anything like that, feel free to share. And we will go ahead and wait a couple minutes for more to join. Um, and then we'll go ahead and get started. And while we wait, Caroline is going to share a link to the Q&A. So as any questions arise during today's conversation, feel free to drop questions in that Q&A and we will uh, address them at the end of the call. So with that, we'll wait a couple minutes and then we'll go ahead and get started. All right, let's jump in. So thank you everyone for joining today's uh, Graph Quarterly Participant Update. We are super excited to share everything that's happened in, in Q3. Um, just a quick reminder, this is a recorded call. It will be shared publicly. So with that, feel free to make any content during today's presentation and ask any questions in the link that Caroline shared in the Zoom chat. So just a quick disclaimer, there are no forward-looking statements in this presentation. And if you intend to purchase DRT, make sure you only purchase the amount that you do intend to use in the network as it is a uh, utility work token. So with that, what's the purpose of this update? So we want to provide summaries on the work that's been done over the last quarter within the graph ecosystem, showcase all the technological advancements that the core contributors are building behind the scenes within the graph ecosystem and provide updates on how the graph is continuing to grow and innovate and improving the developer experience, as well as shining some light into what we can anticipate next quarter or this quarter, um, and then share ways uh, how you can help get more involved within the graph ecosystem. So with that, I'm Tegan Klein. I'm the co-founder of Edge and Node, the initial team behind the graph. We really want to help entrepreneurs and developers build incredible applications that are permanent. Uh, and, and that's really what we're doing with infrastructure like the graph. So with that, uh, let's take a look at the highlights from Q3. I know we're, at, we're almost to the half of Q4 and there's been a lot of exciting updates in Q4 uh, already. Uh, but in Q3, we can see that there were 106 new subgraphs on the graphs decentralized network. These are all Ethereum based subgraphs. And there was a 24% increase from last quarter. But with that, we can look at the query fee increase at 282,000 GRT query fees. That's a 51% increase from last quarter. So what this signifies is that a lot of the applications that are moving to the graphs decentralized network uh, have, have a, a more traction. They're, they're seeing more queries on their applications. And with that, the MIPS program launched and 50 new, 52 new indexers spun up thus far on the graphs decentralized network. And we saw over 100, uh, or sorry, over 1800 applications for the MIPS program. So that's really exciting because it means that indexers are looking forward to indexing multiple chains beyond just Ethereum. So there are now over 500 new subgraphs that have been published to the Graphs Decentralized Network, uh, which is exciting to see the ramp up there. And with that, query fees are continuing to grow. So with migrations, more queries are on the decentralized network. And what's been interesting in the blockchain space is that everyone is really focused on writes, like writing to the blockchain, whereas the graph is really focused on reads. 
And when you post a Twitter, a, a tweet as an example, uh, that tweet is one right. But if you get 250 likes, that's an example of the, the reads on that tweet. So with this, uh, this is a double click into the indexers on the network. So this chart shows just the growth rate in indexers. Um, so there are now over 200 indexers on the graph network. And those indexers are the ones serving those queries for the applications. And this is very important as we go multi-chain to have many different indexers on all of the chains that are going to spin up on the Graph's decentralized network beyond Ethereum. When we look to delegation, there are now over 10,000 delegators on the Graph network. Um, so delegators help secure the Graph network. They also help indexers increase the stake that they have. And so if you were one of the first 10,000 delegators, congratulations. If you have interest in delegating and you don't know how to get started, feel free to reach out to us. We're always happy to help. And it's just a couple of clicks. You just have to choose the right indexer or multiple indexers, which is what I recommend. When it comes to developers on the decentralized network, we're really seeing healthy growth here. Um, the builders are still building. Uh, so there are over, uh, over 35,000 developers on the decentralized network today. And these are some of the subgraphs that are using the graphs decentralized network. So Balancer, Sushi, Yearn, uh, many, many others. And you can see all of those here, which is exciting because they're all decentralizing their infrastructure at uh, the indexing and query layer. So when it comes to the network, we've really been focused on improving the experience for developers and users, as well as the billing process. So we've actually moved away from a deprecation timeline to exit criteria functionality. Um, so what this means is that we're really focused on improving everything on the decentralized network so that it's much better than anything centralized than the hosted service. Um, and so with that, this has been a, a major focus for us. Um, and we've been taking steps to decrease the steps when you do launch a subgraph to make it a lot easier for developers. And then when it comes to billing, there are many steps today, and we're working on reducing those steps as well. And all of these have near-term solutions in progress, and we've made substantial progress on all of this thus far in, in Q4, but we'll share that uh, on the next uh, update. So when it comes to these improvements, uh, gas fees are, are a hindrance to the decentralized network today. So when you curate, when you index, when you delegate, you have to pay gas costs in Ethereum, um, but also when you publish a subgraph to the network, you incur gas costs as well. So the solution is moving to Arbitrum. There's a GIP that's going through the process for this, and this will reduce costs, we assume, at around 95%. And also what this unlocks is advanced tasks when it comes to earn programs like Coinbase or like CMC so that you can actually get users participating in the network um, which is all about, you know, all, all, all what we're focused on here. Uh, and when I was at Web Summit, so many people came up to me and they said they actually earned, learned about the graph through a Coinbase earn or through a CMC earn. So we're excited to ramp up the task there to really get people participating in the network. Um, a second piece is on the fiat on ramp. Some projects, they just want to pay for queries with a credit card and let all of the GRT piece happen in the background. So this is a piece around improving that, that billing experience. Um, and they also want reoccurring payments so that they don't have to think about it. Um, and so that's the second solution is just getting subscriptions on the decentralized network. So all of these things are, are a work in progress currently. When it comes to the quality of service, so we're actually seeing this on par and better than the hosted service, which is great. And we're continuing to make efforts to really improve the quality of service on the decentralized network. And then going cross chain. So Gnosis was announced as the next chain on the graphs decentralized network. This is exciting because it will unlock uh, the subgraphs that are building on Gnosis to be able to migrate to the decentralized network, decentralize their, their indexing and query layer, um, and we've been in, in conversations with many of the applications on Gnosis already, uh, and Gnosis is, is doing a lot um, behind the programs that are running as well, um, which has been great just in partnership with Gnosis. Uh, and if you have opinions on the next chains that you want 
to see on the decentralized network. We would love to hear from you. Um, there's you know, many different chains that we could unlock next and um, on, in the likes of Polygon or Arbitrum or Optimism. So we would love to hear from you to see who you think should be unlocked next. So protocol metrics and uh, data apps. So Mazari has been working on a lot of products internally. Mazari is now a core developer um, and they all of their data is powered by the graph. They really wanted to build on something that's positive sum as opposed to zero sum building on a centralized analytics platform that no one really benefits from other than that centralized company. Um, so this is really exciting and they have really great um, really great products that they're working on internally and they're standardizing the subgraphs so that everyone can use really great subgraphs. So if you are an application within the Web3 space and you need help building a top-notch subgraph, talk to Mazari. They can add features for you. Um, and if you know anyone that is building that could leverage Mazari's help, uh, let, the, let the team know Vincent is, is great in leading that charge. And with this, I will pass it over to Eva Balin, who's the director of the Graph Foundation. Awesome, thank you so much, Tegan. You can go to the next slide. Cool, so would like to discuss a bit more about what technical progress we've been making. So these three GIPs we have here are what we focused on the last few months and will be in production very soon. The first one being that layer two integration as Tegan mentioned, so um, enabling that Arbitrum bridge and deploying on Arbitrum to scale for all participants. Um, the next one is what we call an Epoch Block Oracle, which is a component that unblocks multi-chain integrations on the network. So right now we've uh, started with Gnosis Chain, um, and this Epoch Block Oracle enables Gnosis Chain to be supported on mainnet. So right now the MIPS program has been on for several weeks. Um, we've got over 350 Gnosis indexers, meaning they're running Gnosis Chain as well as Graph Node. Um, that are testing out um, the infrastructure, figuring out how to um, you know, work, work with Gnosis as a new chain. Um, and once this Epoch block Oracle passes, we'll be able to support um, new chains as well. Um, the third one here, oh, sorry. The third one here is just curation um, improvements. So we've gotten a lot of feedback from users, both developers and just um, random curators. Um, that the bonding curve we had was a little too aggressive, and so it was um, impacting user experience. Um, so sort of related to some of the improvements that Tegan mentioned related to billing, um, curation improvements will really um, improve the DevX to make sure that migration is much more seamless. So the roadmap uh, is focused really on a few key level um, um, objectives, uh, one being the hosted service deprecation that, as Tegan mentioned, is delayed until we finish some billing and UX improvements. Um, there really is no rush here on developers, and we're really trying to ensure that every DAP feels safe and that they have all the support needed throughout their migration or development process. Um, expanding multi-chain, so again, hoping that all chains um, are migrated over the next several months, and we're already seeing the steam pick up um, even in this first cycle with Gnosis Chain, so we expect that um, to speed up over um, every chain that we roll out. Um, Substreams-based subgraphs, you might have heard a bit about this. Um, Substreams is a new technology that will make it much uh, faster to sync the subgraphs that um, everyone knows and loves today. So this should really improve uh, syncing speed anywhere between 10 and 100x, depending on the subgraph. Um, so looking for that to come into production very soon. Um, Misari continuing to do their work on standardized subgraphs. Um, and this goes beyond just the Misari app. It really enables uh, data standardization throughout the ecosystem. So what we see a lot of is teams using the same subgraphs for different reasons. Um, and the goal is to standardize across protocols. So that way, lending uh, subgraphs all look the same. You know, the definition of TVL is the same, et cetera. Um, and this should elevate Web3 past just, you know, um, being standards for APIs. Um, graph client updates, there's quite a few exciting features here that the Guild has been working on. Um, so a bunch of new features for subgraph developers to improve their experience with GraphQL. Um, and lastly, continuing the DevX improvements that we mentioned, um, hashtag flatten the curve. Um, that's the bonding curve on our curation. Um, I'll go over these a, a bit quicker, but um, to maybe dive into what substreams are, I, I know that we've talked a lot about this. Basically, they're parallelized data streams um, of raw data. So it makes it much easier to get um, raw data like state that um, you know, could unlock other use cases, um, but also just makes syncing subgraphs much faster since you're just updating um, per block much faster than you would be otherwise. Um, what's really cool about new use cases is that the graph to this uh, point may have not been able to support all use cases like wallets or block explorers um, or a plethora of, of 
of others, um, you know, whether that's analytics or front ends, and Substreams really unblocks that. So um, we're really excited to focus over the next several months on bringing Substreams and Firehose to the network, um, and that will also bring that volume to the network as well. Um, I want to go over maybe just one of these, which is GraphCast. Um, so this is a gossip network that's being developed by one of um, our core devs, GraphOps. And the goal here was really to unblock efficiency um, between indexers, but really this technology in theory could be used between other protocols. So um, expanding past the graph, um, other protocols that might have um, you know, um, communication between their node operators could gain from um, a lot of what we're working on. Uh, going over what we've achieved to date with MIPS, so um, we have 75 million GRT allocated to this program. This will be divvied up per chain as well as per indexer as they participate in different chains. Um, we're seeing that some indexers have preferences. For example, some love Gnosis, they want to run Gnosis. Um, others might not feel like they want to run certain chains for whatever other trade-offs are important to them. Um, so far, like I said, we have over 360 indexers um, syncing Gnosis, which is amazing. Um, and we're continuing to collaborate with Gnosis with um, some really exciting announcements coming soon, um, as well as announcing the new chain, um, which should unlock a whole other um, sort of community that we're tapping into. Um, we've gotten really close with Gnosis over the last few months, but we're excited to expand. And uh, lastly, going over a lot of what we've been doing on the community development front. So um, decentralization has been a goal of ours for some time at the foundation and council level. And we are in the process of bootstrapping two DAOs in the community. Advocates DAO that launched over six months ago is in full stride. Um, they're doing their own grants independently and they're also running um, a bunch of graph birthday events. Um, so we'll be sharing more about those um, coming soon, but um, expect that uh, um, at least one event on each continent um, will be hosted by advocates. Um, a lot of what they're also doing is figuring out where are the gaps in our ecosystem. So for example, um, the advocates spun up this initiative of approaching other protocol teams to have subgraph querying docs integrated into those protocol websites. So for example, ENS um, right now, if you go to their website, you can see how to query a subgraph. And that was work that was all managed by the advocates DAO. Um, so we're really seeing the fruits of sort of this labor of um, building a wider network of contributors globally that then come up with their own ideas of how to contribute. Um, on Subgraph DAO, this one is still a little early, but our goal is that um, we give out bounties and grants so other teams and individuals can feel like they can help actually help um, those DAOs migrate. Um, so instead of the core developers working on those themselves, um, we can have other Subgraph developers hold their hands. Thank you so much, Eva. Great. And then one thing I want to double click into is just that, you know, the graph is here to provide core infra infrastructure for the future of the web, where we are very much playing a long game. We want this infrastructure to be used 100 plus years in, into the future, and we want to enable applications to be permanent. And in order for these applications to be permanent, you need a decentralized Web3 stack that the graph is a core piece of. And it's great that we have so many companies building towards this mission uh, within the graph ecosystem with the graph foundation kind of steward stewarding us forward. So I just want to double click into the Q4 priorities and goals. So Gnosis chain, we really want to get that lit up on the decentralized network um, and start migrating subgraphs that are building on Gnosis onto the decentralized network from the hosted. We also plan to announce the next network chain integration. Uh, so that will be exciting. Again, we would love to hear from you. If you think that should be Polygon, Arbitrum, Optimism, we would love to hear your opinions there. We are migrating the graph to Arbitrum uh, so that we can reduce gas costs. And we're really focused on improving the developer experience, user experience, latency, billing, uh, and we plan to get a fiat on-ramp network integration, hopefully by uh, next quarter. And we're really just focused on, as an entire ecosystem, migrations uh, and getting uh, subgraphs supported on the decentralized network. And we've really leaned in here. We fully white glove the process so that it's very, very easy for developers and founders and entrepreneurs to um, migrate their subgraphs onto the network. So with this, how you can help. So we would love to hear from you on how uh, the graph network is uh, is going. Any data that you need, you're you're welcome to reach out to us. Um, it, all of, most of it is public on the the graph network, but we're always happy to um, provide that to you. And uh, if you want to share your your copies in advance with us, we would love to to help. 
Um, and then also just introducing us to any teams that need help with migration. Again, we will fully white glove that process for them and make it as seamless as possible. Uh, also uh, invite your community to be graph advocates. I met one graph advocate, Pablo, at the Web Summit booth. He was helping out there. Um, and graph advocates are volunteers for the graph community. Um, so we would love for you to invite your community. It's a great way to get started into Web3 and also rise up as a leader within the graph and, and the Web3 space. We are also hiring. So we're hiring, the, um, the Graph Foundation is hiring for a CFO. We at Edgenode are hiring for a senior product uh, manager, developer relations, a site reliability engineer. GraphOps is hiring a REST engineer and streaming fast uh, back on engineering go. If there are any speaking opportunities or workshops to help educate on the graph network or subsequently Web3, we are always happy to lean in there. Uh, so feel free to send any opportunities our way. Uh, at Edge and Node, we just launched the House of Web3 in San Francisco, which is a co-creation space uh, for anyone to come and, and work from and be a part of and host events at. Uh, so let me know if you want information there. And of course, delegate on the graph to help secure the network if you're not already doing so. And again, always happy to help there. A few thank yous before we get to Q&A. I want to say thank you so much to the Subgraph DAO members who are working hard on outreach and migration support to help the core developer teams scale that effort. Uh, it's really been great seeing them lean in there. Also, thank you to Michael and Craig from Reciprocal Ventures for all the support and strategy guidance. Thank you to John for connecting us with talent. We actually hired George from Edge and Node based on John's recommendation. And a big thank you to the Graph Advocates who host events around the world and help uh, educate at Graph Booths. And of course, thank you to the Graph Council for uh, the continued focus on strategy and, and pushing the protocol forward. So with that, I'll pass it over to Kyle to uh, read through the Q&A questions. It looks like Kyle is muted. Caroline, he might need your help to unmute. All right, I'm live. You can hear me? Awesome, sorry for that. We had a few questions to start out taken on the hosted service deprecation exit criteria and I'll consolidate those into really one or two here. So any idea what the exit criteria benchmarks will look like to pick up the hosted service deprecation again? And then also when the deprecation starts again, will it eventually be a timeline once more, or will the uh, will it look very different in general in the future? Have we thought through that? Yeah, so we're actually moving away from the timeline to the exit criteria. So keep an eye on the exit criteria. I actually shared a tweet recently that is pretty exciting just in terms of the progress that we've made in Q4 already. Um, but the criteria is really around quality of service, latency, developer experience, user experience, and billing. And we lay this all out and um, it's all laid out in the graph blog. And then Brandon also put out a tweet kind of double clicking into all of it. And also looking back on, you know, the journey to where we are today. But one thing, you know, we hear oftentimes people will say, oh, decentralization doesn't matter. Users don't care about decentralization. And, you know, maybe users don't care, but they don't need, they shouldn't need to care because the infrastructure and the applications should be decentralized. We should care. Um, and there's a good analogy between uh, Tesla and what the graph is doing. So before people said, you know, no one's ever going to buy an electric car, but then Tesla kind of leveled the playing field and made it cheaper to buy an electric car and everyone adopted, the, many people have adopted the electric car. Um, and I think the graph is doing similar with decentralization. We're going to make it better, faster, cheaper, and it's just a no-brainer to use decentralized infrastructure. Um, and so that's the journey that we're on currently. Um, but it is very much on the focus is on exit criteria. But I'm pretty confident that we'll see a large majority of the the traffic on the network by uh, early next year. Thanks. Again, Dave. depending on exit criteria. That actually flows into the second question that related, you know, what's a real world example of how the recurring billing user flow and UX might work? Uh, I can maybe give some, some feedback there, or if you'd like to take it first, it's up to you. 
Yeah, I would just say, you know, an example could be snapshot pulling in using a credit card instead of holding GRT on their balance sheet. Uh, and that way they're able to just pay for their users, uh, their users query fees and GRT kind of flows in the background, but they don't have to deal with that. As an example, some dApps, they, you know, they want to use GRT and be crypto native, but others, they would prefer to use a credit card. Uh, but yeah, Kyle, feel free to click, double click. Yeah, and that actually relates to our sec our next question, which I'll say and then and add some more. But would you share some more about GRT volatility for developers and how that's being addressed? So the the fiat on ramp, the recurring billing and payments, the subscriptions are all to enable people to have a SaaS front end experience while still leveraging the decentralized power of a decentralized network in the back end. So what we're trying to do is make sure people don't need to, and one of the price volatility experiences so far is holding GRT, and as GRT goes ups and down, because queries are priced in USD, that can affect their purchasing power if they hold one or two months of GRT. And with a subscription or recurring payments, essentially when an invoice comes out, they would pay with USD, credit card, ACH, whatever it may be, and that automatically transitions to GRT in the back end, which will abstract all of that, what will still enable the work token experience on the back end, which is so important to uh, making sure this network works at scale. So those are two things that hopefully answer those different questions. Yeah, and there are many different third-party providers that, that help with this flow. And so we've been speaking to many of them and um, we're working on a, a partnership. So we'll, we'll keep you all posted on the progress there. Last question I think we have here is, uh, just understanding what the MIPS program is, migration migration infrastructure program. So if we can dive in on what that is, why why it is there, and we could always go into numbers too on, on what that looks like from the foundation. Eva, you probably take that. Yeah, for sure. So um, MIPS is migration infrastructure providers, and it's basically an incentivized program similar to an incentivized testnet to have our indexers start supporting new chains on the network. So right now, um, or prior to MIPS launch, um, we only supported Ethereum, Gnosis chain was the first chain that we're doing, um, and we have a cycle per chain. So really, it's just about getting these indexers, firstly, running those nodes, then testing graph node on those nodes and testing um, sort of their own mechanics as indexers for those chains as things um, differ per chain, really, um, and then getting that chain on mainnet. Um, so right now, we're maybe about a week away from having Gnosis on mainnet. Um, the indexers have been testing over the last few weeks, and this means that um, we're kind of moving towards being able to migrate all the subgraphs for those chains. Um, so, for example, we started with Gnosis first because they were very aligned. There's quite a few subgraph users, um, but we'll be rolling out every chain subsequently. Um, and our goal is that we don't need to have sort of this hand-holding experience per chain. Um, it's just the first few that because this is brand new for our indexers, um, but hopefully we'll be able to do this much quicker. Um, and eventually this will just be sort of the community submitting GIP saying, hey, we want to support this new chain, um, the council and the community then passing it, and those indexers then just running those nodes. Um, and at that point, all the subgraphs that are supported for that chain can be migrated to. Yeah, I think it's worth mentioning too, this is a similar process as early days of the hosted service. We started out with just Ethereum, we started out with a handful of developers, we really iterated for them, uh, and then we saw kind of escape velocity, and in terms of new subgraphs being created, in terms of uh, new chains being added, and I think the decentralized network is very similar. As we onboard new chains, that process becomes a lot easier over time. And then in terms of rewards, we've allocated 75 million GRT for the entirety of this program. So 50 million GRT is being rewarded to indexers as grants, um, and they're basically competing at the per chain level. We even have a leaderboard that you can check out on our website um, currently for the Gnosis indexers. Um, and then 25 million GRT has been allocated as migration grants to all the subgraphs and DAP developers um, for these multi-chain subgraphs to really make sure that their process is smooth. And last question that just came in, how can I become a member on each DAO? And I think I could take that. So the graph advocates, Eva, you could always add more color there, but if you are interested in becoming a graph advocate, you can apply here. I just put the link into the chat. And then if you'd like to be part of the subgraph DAO, which is working with all of us to try to help these migrations through, making sure people understand the process and making sure people adopt the network and are comfortable through uh, every step of the way, just reach out to me directly. 
Simone, a, a senior solutions engineer, and I are helping run this program, making sure everyone's comfortable on the process, the scripting, understanding everything, and making sure people are technical enough to walk folks through the whole migration process. So happy to reach out to me, happy to take a call, Zoom, and we can hop into a chat, and then I'll add you to the SubgraphDAO Discord if you're still interested. Yeah, the last thing on Advocates DAO is we welcome you and all your friends for sure. Um, and really any expertise is welcome. So whether you're a technical teacher or someone that maybe wants to mentor others on subgraphs or anything in Web3, or maybe you want to help with translations, or maybe you just want to be an advocate and help out at events. Um, similar to what Tegan said, we had an advocate named Paolo who joined us at one of our booths. Um, and the goal is that advocates, you know, um, are able to come and, and actually participate in the events and represent the graph. So, um, yes, please apply. And then if you want to stay even more engaged, you can join the DAO. Um, and the DAO is governing a budget over community grants. Um, so this is the process of the foundation actually starting to delegate more of our funding and grants programming um, to the DAOs. Amazing. Great. Well, thanks everyone for joining. We appreciate it. Uh, feel free to reach out. We're happy to set up one-on-one -on -one calls anytime uh, to answer any other questions that you may have. And we will share this recording with you. So feel free to share that to your, your communities. Thank you so much. See you all soon.